Welcome to Road Trip Branson. I'm your host, Rebecca Schlau. This is episode 12, and today we're going to be talking a little bit more about holidays in Branson. For those who are brand new to listening to the show, I encourage you to go back to episode 4 that I recorded back in February. This is when I went over my Branson tips like at Christmas time, and I think this will be a good resource because I don't think I really have any changes to add. I'm going to go over some of the same stuff I've already covered just because we're getting close to that season. So I'm going to go over a little bit about Christmas in Branson, um, but, but not too much. I'm actually going to go over a few things that some people have recently asked me. So the first question was about planning a trip to Branson around Christmas. And my friend had asked me um, to give her some tips about going to Silver Dollar City during the holidays. And she says, we're going to be going up there for maybe the first weekend of December. And we're going to be, you know, we want a full day of Silver Dollar City on a Saturday, blah, 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 blah. Uh, You know, just they already kind of had it in mind. And the first thing I said to her, like, was, uh, well, what are your trip dates? And she's going to be going down from, like, a Thursday to a Sunday. And I was like, well, what do you got planned? You already got stuff planned for those days. And the only thing they had planned was they had their room booked. And I then asked if they were going to do Polar Express. And she said, yes. And we're going to do that on the Thursday, but we haven't booked it yet. Okay. Okay. So I said, wait, 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 do not book anything yet. Let's, let's really look at your schedule. If you know you're going to be in Branson on Thursday and there's a way maybe you to, to be in Branson all day Thursday, then my opinion would be to skip Silver Dollar City on a Saturday in December because that's going to be nightmare town, y'all. Nightmare town, Silver Dollar City. During Christmas time, on a Saturday, on a weekend, any weekend, like Friday to Sunday, it will be nightmare town. And y'all, I will go over tips. We go, we go when it's super crowded. We're used to it. So it doesn't bother us anymore. But for those who don't go to Branson all the time or aren't familiar with Branson at Christmas time, I don't want you to set yourself up for some disappointment because if you don't you know, kind of follow some rules about Branson or Silver Dollar City at Christmas time, you know, you're going to be faced with a lot of lines and really crowded parks and you might go a little crazy. So I asked my friend if there would be any way she could switch her Silver Dollar City day to Thursday and do Polar Express on Saturday. The first step to that though, was going back to see what sort of availability they still have at Polar Express. Cause y'all, they start opening up Polar Express tickets like the very end of April, beginning of May. And that is the best time to book. I know that sounds so far away, but it just gets booked booked up, especially those premium seats. So, we were just going to look at her schedule and see if there was a way she could switch it. Um, before I go, go into Silver Dollar City during the holidays, just a review of Polar Express. Polar Express is on the Branson Scenic Railway towards the kind of the old downtown Branson landing area of Branson. It is a just an adorable little experience for kids. You get dressed up in your pajamas. Uh, You go on a real train, kind of mimicking the whole Polar Express, you know, if you've seen the book or the movie, you know, based on the movie. They have the same music. They read the book to you. You get to have an appearance with Santa Claus and the hobo, and you kind of, you, I mean, you're actually in the train, and it, it is driving. It goes all the way down to Hollister, which is just a few miles down the track, and kind of back the other way. And there's Christmas carols, and you sing, and there's uh, some some musicians that are kind of traveling from from train car to train car singing, uh, and you get hot cocoa, and you get cookies, and it's just a really cute experience, especially for little kids. But even as adults, we had a lot of fun. There are two types of seating 
on Polar Express. There are coach seating, which are the regular seats, and there's premium seating, which is the fancy seats. Coach seating is is going to be cheaper, okay? And you're not going to get unlimited hot cocoa or unlimited cookies. If you do premium seating, you will get unlimited hot cocoa in a souvenir mug that you get to keep and you'll get unlimited cookies and with that unlimited cocoa by the way when you do premium seating you can tell them to put on like you can tell them to pile on that whipped cream because my kids are kind of obsessed with whipped cream and sometimes they just want a mug filled with whipped cream and they will they they will oblige and it's great and oh and one of the best parts about the cocoa is it's served just warm hot it's not served so hot you can't drink it no you can start drinking the cocoa immediately like it's the it's kind of the perfect temperature so and the cookies taste really good too they taste like they're made with like almond extract a little so they're like sugar cookies they're really good but we prefer of course premium seating now um we're so fancy but the first few years we went we did coach seating and we were very happy in coach seating you either have like a like a, a bench seating where all the seats are just lined up on the wall or you have like bus type seating except like there will be two two rows that face each other so you know two people in your group can be on one side and two people on the other side and y'all kind of look at each other and they're, they're by the windows so it really depends on which car the cabin car you are you can go on the website and research some of the the cars in the train if that helps give you a better idea uh, the pricing though if you do coach the regular seating um, it's going to be a little bit cheaper for adults it's going to be $44 plus tax for children it will be $34 plus tax now if you go with a baby like those that are under two years old that can just sit in your lap that don't actually have to have a seat or like cocoa or cookies or something or maybe they could just steal yours they do have like a two dollar charge but it's totally worth it now premium seats are going adults will be uh anywhere between 59 to 69 dollars kids will be about 49 to 59 dollars same thing with the lap seaters those will be those will be two dollars now the ranges for the premium seating is a little bit different because they have premium dome seating options which is the very top floor of there's some double decker cars where you can actually kind of go upstairs and it's it's like a dome like a glass dome so you're surrounded by windows you know to the left right and look up you know you're so I hear it's great I have some friends that always try to go for dome we've never done the dome we always try to get a uh, premium seating towards the bar area there's like a bar it's not they don't actually <laughs> serve anything uh, unfortunately for uh, my sister Rachel they are not serving any alcohol at that point but it's by the bar and by the bar there's a little extra space so we try to get seating really close to that closed down bar because we have a little bit more space to run around with our our crazy kids so there's a little bit more room in premium seating and you get to sit at a table which is really nice because you can put your cookies down so everyone it feels more like a restaurant seating than just like a bus so would you rather sit at a, a table at a restaurant or would you rather sit on a bus that's kind of what it feels like. However, like I said, the first two years we did this, you know, we didn't we didn't make as much money and we couldn't, you know, spend the extra, I don't know how much ever, 40 bucks or 50 bucks. And it was totally fine. We had little bitty kids and they didn't care. They did not care one bit. We started doing premium seating when we could afford it um, and, and we haven't gone back. But if there was no seats available in premium, I, I don't have a problem with the coach seating. So I don't want anyone to be like, oh, I can't afford premium seating. Um, I say the first time you go, if you're not sure, I mean, you can either or. If you have the extra money, definitely do premium seating. Um, you know, compared to an adult, premium adult, um, regular, I mean, that, it, it's, you know, there is a, you know, a $15 difference. So if you can spend a $15 difference on each person, I say go for it. The only other problem with the premium seating um, that we're kind of running into is you got, you can, they can only sell the seats in multiples of two. So hopefully you got a family of four, because if you got a family of five like me, once they get out of that lap rider phase, you know, the next time I go, on Polar Express, I for my family of five, I have to book a table for 
six. So I better find someone else to come with us or I'm just going to eat that cost. That's good when you, I mean, I, so it's kind of nice when you go with family members and you can kind of coordinate who's going with you. Um, and hopefully you'll be in a multiple of two. Uh, with the regular coach seating, you don't have to worry about that. Now, because everything has started booking up, there are already several dates in November, you know, close to Thanksgiving and also, you know, December that are completely sold out. Your, you know, those Saturdays in December and November are so sought after. The Saturday, the Fridays and Saturdays. Now, those are usually prime times to go. Now, I love going to Polar Express on Saturdays because, again, I don't like to go to Silver Dollar City on Saturdays. So, for me, it doesn't cut into my Silver Dollar City time. So, I try to do Polar Express on a Saturday. It will be, Polar Express will be the same crowded on Thursday as it will be on Saturday. So, there will be no difference in crowd because they can only sell a limited number. So, I try to do though, I try to do Polar Express when it's going to be more crowded at other attractions, which is, you know, smack dab in the middle of the weekend. So, you know, I looked at the um the schedule. They still have several dates available in time. Now, depending on the day, they'll either have like a like a 4:30 departure, a 6:30 departure, and then on like the weekends, I think they even have an 8.30 departure. So there's usually two to three departures. Our preference is always, okay, listen to this. Our preference is always the 4.45 show. Now, a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to go that early because then it's not really dark. Well, it gets dark. Remember, it's winter or it's starting to be winter. So it gets dark pretty early that time of year. And so by 5 o'clock, I mean, it's already, you know... Lights are down, down low. By the time you get out of that train at like, what, 6.30, 6.15? I mean, you've been on for an hour and a half. It is dark. And so, it, it you know, it feels Christmassy. You drive by Christmas lights. You still see the Christmas lights. And by the time you get off at 6.30, now is the perfect time to go do something else. So, we always go to dinner or go shopping at Branson Landing. We have time to do stuff. If you go to a 6.30 or 8.30 show... You know, or especially that 6.30, or not 6.30 show. It's not a show. It's a departure. If you go to that 6.30 departure, you're kind of stuck at the prime time of, like, doing stuff. Like, if you have, a, like, small kids and stuff, you know how they get tired so early. So, you're either going to dinner super early in the day or going really late. So, for us, it just kind of, eh, we don't really like the later times. And I mean, you can be real crazy and go to that 8:30 one. Now, if I now when my kids get older, I don't have any problems with that. We could possibly go out to eat ahead of time, and then just go, you know, straight from there. And it's super easy. To, you could park in the Polar Express parking lot and then just walk across the street to Branson Landing to tons of restaurants. So you'd be fine. Now, because you got to pick up your tickets there, they always tell you to arrive like 45 minutes early. And they do that because there's there's usually a pretty big line to get your tickets. So you do need to show up early. So for instance, for that 4.45 departure, we actually get there around 4. And we and by the time we get there, I swear, there's already people crowded. Now, we've been a little bit um, adventurous in our last year or two. And, you know, I'm going to be honest. We, we, uh, we may have arrived around... 425 one time when we were feeling really rebellious for our 445 uh our 445 departure i do not recommend it you want to get there early for a variety of reasons not only do you have to wait in line to get all your tickets but that is a great time to use the restroom now there are bathrooms on polar express and we use them frequently and those are fine it works fine but i prefer not to have to go on the train so i'd rather take my kids especially the babies uh, diaper changes do all that ahead of time and before the train leaves is the perfect time to get pictures in front of the train if it's there now if you go to the 445 departure the train is always there for pictures whenever you want if you wait to go to one of those later departures the train will be gone on the other rides so i really like that 445 one but i could completely understand if someone just you know, can't make that happen. But I did see there's a lot more availability of the 445 de departures, which is crazy. I don't think people realize it. I think they just assume it's too early, but it's not, y'all. Take it. It's perfect. It gets dark when you're on it. It's perfect. 
take that one. Um, I did look at availability. I did see there were some, um, you know, after after Thanksgiving on like Friday and Saturday, co there's some coach seating. I think there may even be some premium seating on November 29th, November 30th. There's some availability on Thursday, December 5th. There's some um, availability on Thursday, December 12th. There's some availability on Friday, December 13th. Um, so I, I just, and I didn't look at all the availability. I just looked at their, their schedule to see what all they had to make sure that I'm not wasting my time telling y'all about Polar Express and hurry up and book it. And there's not actually some. So again, if you can do premium seating and they have it available, try to do it. If you have a choice of, of times and days, I would pick 445 premium seating on a Friday or Saturday. If you are able to get to Branson on a Thursday pretty early, go straight to Silver Dollar City and don't look back. So getting on to the Silver Dollar City segment, the reason why I just... Silver Dollar City used to be like this beautiful hidden gem and it was amazing. But Silver Dollar City is amazing. I mean, it is such a well planned out and beautiful theme park and it keeps growing and with the growth and with all it you know people have discovered it people know how beautiful it is at christmas time this thing lights up like whoo like fireworks y'all it is the lights at silver dollar city are i've never seen anything like it they're just beautiful and it, it really just, it, it's the perfect spot for Christmas. It's the most Christmassy place I can think of. And I just love going to it so much. But I'm not alone. I mean, a lot of people think the same thing. And no one wants to take their kids out of school. But, y'all, it's for us, it's always been worth it to take our kids out a few days so we can go to Branson before the crowds get there over the weekend. So, you know, even when my kids were starting kindergarten, first grade, second grade, now they're in third grade, we we start taking our, our, our Branson vacations usually like that very same week right after Thanksgiving. So my kids miss a ton of school right away. But for us, it's worth it. For us, we will we'll have makeup work and my kids will fall behind and it will be such a big hassle. But for us, it is... It's worth a little bit of extra work over Thanksgiving break to to let our kids go to, to Silver Dollar City when it's not uh, huge and crowded. Now, for some people, that's just not an option. Like, there's no way you can take off work. There's no way you can miss school. Like, you just cannot do it. Now, you can go to Silver Dollar City on a, Saturday, a Friday or Saturday or Sunday. You can do it during the holiday season. But you just need to know what you're preparing, you know, what you're getting involved in. During the holidays... The line to get into the park, the car line, if you don't go at opening, you just need to go ahead and bank that right around opening, the park opening, there will be a line, and that line, you might be in that car line for an hour. It may take you an hour and a half to park your car. It will be, it can be a hassle, and I'm not trying to scare y'all, I just want y'all to be prepared. If you want to get to Silver Dollar City when it opens. So if it says the park opens at 9, like that's what time it opens, keep in mind, you can still get there earlier and walk around. So if they say the attractions start opening at 9, that means they start letting people in towards the top around 8. That means you need to be parking earlier than that. You need to be in there as soon as they allow people in. You need to get there early. It, it, Y'all, and it may be uncomfortable to get you, you and your, your kids up that early. If it opens at 9, you know, you need to, you need to be leaving your, your hotel uh, God, maybe a little after 7. I wouldn't wait. I would bring something to do. I'd bring your breakfast in the car. Um, if you have a stroller, it's a lot, I, you know, I kind of think it's easier because you can bring stuff to do. You can, um, you can bring like a mug of coffee. You can bring a cooler in. You can bring stuff. You can bring breakfast in. They, they will have a few stands open where you can buy coffee, hot chocolate. You can go ahead and do some things. You can go ahead and get some shopping done before the park opens. But what you want to do is plan to get there so early that you don't have to wait in that huge line to park. Because if you do... If you're stuck in the line, that's taking away precious park time. 
you want to be there first so you can go ride the rides that, that are most important to you right away. Because the line, the rides, the line build up. The, the lines to the shows build up at Christmas time, particularly. And people don't just go at night for the lights. They go immediately. So parking, now, it, even if you get there late, you can still park. You can get a spot and a tram can get you. It, it's not that big a deal. The problem is I'm so impatient. I hate waiting in a car. Like when you bear, you just inch up. You just inch up a little bit. Oh, that drive. Oh, that drives me so crazy. That drives me insane. I would rather like drive 20 minutes extra than have to wait 20 minutes stuck. Like I need to be doing something. You know, and some people kind of do that whole thing where they wait in that, that huge line of cars and they drive in the right lane to go all the way past it, past the stoplight. They turn around and come back. You know, that that's a... That's a plan too. Uh, some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but there's like this stoplight right before you turn into Silver City. And it's like a highway. It's on a highway. It's a stoplight on a highway. You have to get in this left-hand turn lane to turn into Silver City. So people in the right-hand lane just keep driving through the stoplight while you're trying to turn left. If you go through that stoplight, you're going towards what's called Branson West, which is, you know, a little bitty, a little bitty suburb of Branson. And you just go like a mile down, turn around, and come back to the stoplight, and then you can just make a quick right. So some people do that. Uh, what we're going to do this year, we're actually going to stay at one of the hotels that when you go to Solar City and you make that left at that stoplight to go into the parking lot, like if you kept going straight, you could go in a little road like kind of through the parking lot, I think, to get to another road that goes towards the table rock lake with there's some condos so we're going to stay down there we're not going to be planning a big holiday trip either because of we have so much to do but when we stay we're actually just going to stay about a mile away from the park where we don't have to fight that line we will fight it we won't fight it at all i mean technically i think we could god we could probably do a tram or, or just walk there so just make sure if you are going to silver dollar city on a Saturday, or I mean, honestly, anytime there's going to be crowds, which will be holidays, spring break, anytime kids are out of school and parents don't have to take off from work, those are going to be, those are the best times to go, but that's what everyone thinks too. If it's convenient for you, it's convenient for them, and you just have to think like that. If it's a perfect time, kids out of school, you're out of work, you're going to be faced with crowds. Again, we do this enough or it doesn't bother us because we don't feel like we miss out. We know if something's crowded, we know lots of other things to do. So we don't, you know, if we get there very early in the morning, the first thing we are going to go do is ride the rides that are hard, um, that are hard to get. Now, something you can do, let's say you, you don't want to wake up early, but you want to go to Silver Dollar City on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday during the holiday season and you want to ride all the rides and you don't want to wait in any lines well here's the thing it actually is possible but it's going to cost you and this is where a trailblazer pass comes in handy so these trailblazer passes are kind of like your tickets to the front of the line that means you get to skip the huge line and get right on now, it's not for every single ride at Silver Dollar City. It's usually just to the thrill rides, the ones that usually have a bigger line. So, the ride, the eligible rides are all the roller coasters. There's Outlaw Run, Wildfire, Powder Keg, Giant Barn Swing, Thunderation, Fire in the Hole, Frisco Silver Dollar Lines, Steam Train, The Electrospin, Magnificent Wave, Carousel, American Plunge, which... Better be closed if you're going in Christmas. The American Plunge is that water ride. Uh, Time Traveler. Again, if you're going in the summer, that would include Tom and Huck's River Blast. So, Time Traveler is the newest one. The one that is getting a lot more national attention right now. All of these other rides I've mentioned are more of the thrill rides. If you have teeny tiny kids, it would not make any sense for you to buy a trailblazer pass. A single trailblazer pass, a normal one, is $43. You can use it for eight rides. 
like eight times. You get to use the pass eight times. Whether you do the same ride eight times or you do different rides, you can use it eight times and they keep track of that. If you want unlimited rides to all the ones I've already mentioned, like if you have a thrill seeker kid or an adult in your group who just loves to go back to back to back on rides and can't just can't get enough. Um, this again, I'm thinking more like teenagers, early adults. Uh, we couldn't do this. We we actually have done it once before, but it's called a Super Trailblazer Pass that costs seventy three dollars plus tax. Now it didn't matter how old you are; you have to pay the same um, for all of these. The Super Trailblazer means you can do it unlimited, so you're already paying a pretty good penny to get in to Silver Dollar City, and then you'll be paying you know anywhere between fifty and eighty bucks more to skip lines. So again, you really have to think cost benefit ratio. So yes, it's going to cost you a lot more to buy this special pass, but you get to save time and get more stuff done. So if you only have one day at Silver Dollar City, one day, and the only day you have is in the smack dab of holiday rush season on a Saturday, <sighs> Y'all, I'd, I'd probably cough up this money if I have kids that are big enough to ride these rides. Now, again, for me, this would not make a lot of sense for us at this time because two out of three of our kids are just not really big enough or interested in the thrill rides. But my eight-year-old really is. She would love to do all of this. But for us, unless it's you know, in the middle of the summer, we're, we're, we're skipping these, but we're also going at low crowd times. Now, the other little kitty rides, those lines don't get as crowded, like the little toddler rides. And so we don't, you know, that, and that's a lot of times the stuff that we're doing right now. If we get there right when park opens, we don't have to worry about getting to the front of line because we just run to whatever ride we want to do first that has a long line, like the thrill rides. So, they also have just introduced, um, just this year, with the popularity of Trailblazer, and I'm assuming these, um, not Trailblazer, with the popularity of Time Traveler, and I guess a lot of people aren't buying these Trailblazer, you know, Fast Pass option uh, tickets. Um, there is a, uh, a single ride of time traveler a one-time use trailblazer pass for time traveler for all ages and that's fifteen dollars <coughs> so that means if you get there and your heart is set on riding time traveler well you don't have to wait in that hour line if you don't want to or two hour line or 45 minute line you could spend fifteen dollars and go straight to the front of the line and Honestly, for me, it's worth it. You know, $15 is definitely worth the cost of avoiding that line. I love avoiding lines. So to me, like trailblazers and stuff, there's a lot of value in that. But of course, I, you know, I'm a weird vacation person. Like this is where I like spend my money. I spend that guac money on vacation. I don't get my hair done or nails done, but I will spend that guac at Silver Dollar City. So for me, like trailblazer passes, this time traveler pass, I mean... If I have kids, I'll do it too. You know, that's worth it for me because my time is very valuable. My time is precious. And I don't want to wait in that line because I'm impatient. So if you have uh, one or two people in your party only that want to do time traveler, that's 30 bucks, but it saves a ton of wait time. And that means you can get more stuff done. Then I think that's a great option. So let's say you get there at park opening and you have let's see, you know, a few people in your party that want to do Time Traveler. Now, keep in mind, Time Traveler is a roller coaster. It's a thrill ride. You have to be like 51 or 52 inches to ride it. It does kind of go upside down. It kind of spins. So it's really not for everybody. But let's say y'all want to do it. And, but you don't want to do, spend the money on Trailblazer Pass, but you want, you, you don't mind spending the money for Time Traveler. Well, if you get there at park opening, like this, you know, your your strategy will be do the other thrill rides first, obviously, because you'll have that fast pass for for um, time traveler whenever. So if you're wanting to do Outlaw Run or Wildfire See Us, we would probably do Wildfire or um, Thunderation or something like that. We would run straight there and then we would do time traveler. Now, if we don't have any of the passes, the first thing we are running to, we are running our rears 
down to Time Traveler. And we are doing that at park opening because the longer you wait, again, everyone starts coming in around opening. Y'all, it's, y'all, it's crazy. The line gets so backed up for miles. And these roads are not built to handle the Silver Dollar City traffic. You'll, you'll be so mad. Um, I have another friend, what's up, Michael, who, uh, who has personal experience of, of the anger and the frustration waiting in the, the line, uh, I think, to get into Silver Dollar City. I, I, I think it was him. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I have, I have a lot of friends who've expressed a lot of frustration about just trying to get into the park and just trying to park. Like, just getting into the park to park and then actually parking. Now, again, if you got that walk, y'all, y'all, if you got, if you got extra money, this is, this is when you need to burn it. Like, these are good investments um, in my mind because, it, you know, again, time is money. I'm trying, pre- time is so precious. So, sometimes when I'm pricing out a vacation for me, I go ahead and add bonus extra stuff that's, extra but it's convenient and I go ahead and kind of build that in like that's just how much it costs I go ahead and and tell myself that even though we have season passes we're you know we're still going to pay an extra I think it's like six to ten bucks for premium parking which still gets us a little bit closer to the entrance and we do that because we can't ride a tram we can't park in BFE we can't we can't do that because we have this Super duper jumbo double stroller that is a pain in the A to fold up. We, so it, for us, we always have to walk anyway. Like if we parked a mile away, we would have to walk a mile away. So we like to spend that $10 for premium parking and we still have to walk a little bit. Like you still have to walk. It's still a little hike up a hill, but we're used to it and it's not quite as painful so we love it we and it we gives us that access you know we can get in a little bit quicker and we don't have to wait for a line for a tram again you have to wait another line for a tram just to get into the actual theme park so before you even get to our city you have three lines to deal with you will have you know what it may be more than that hold on let me count me lines one two three four you will have four to five lines just to get into the park on just a normal operating day. You will have the line of cars to enter the parking lot. You may have a line to do premium parking. You will have a line of people stacked up waiting to get on a tram. And if you don't already have your tickets, which I advise you to get in advance if you can, you will have to get in line for tickets. And then you will have to get in line to go through the you know, the turnstiles with your tickets. So we're talking tons of lines and time sucked in before you even get in the theme park. So again, get there early, 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 early. If you wake up at eight o'clock and the park opens at nine on a Saturday, then I think you're, you know, you've waited too long. You might as well wait till, I don't know, 3 p.m. You might as well wait till about lunchtime. Try to head in. The, th- the crowds will th- start, um, the crowds to get in, the lines to get into the lines will start usually thinning closer to to noon, to lunchtime, and then they will pick back up towards evening when people are coming for the lights. So I recommend getting in early and staying. A lot of times when we go, we do theme parks like we do Disney or even other times we've done Silver City. You know, in the in the summer, sometimes we will come back to our condo or hotel to take a nap in the middle of the day. I do not recommend this for Silver City at Christmas time. It's too crowded. It's it's too hard to fight the traffic twice. So once you're there, you stay there. Find a good spot for your kid to nap if your kid needs a nap. There's actually surprisingly a lot of great nap spots, by the way, in the heat because um, it does get very very cold. Um, there's some great spots to nap. I would recommend the glass blowing place. The candy making store, uh, even around the apple butter store, some of the restaurants, there are going to be warm, cozy places to just take your stroller and uh, let your kids sleep. We like, I especially, my favorite spot is going in where they make peanut brittle, the candy place, because your kid can sleep and you can watch them make candy and then you get to sample the candy. So that's... (laughs) You know, I'm 
I'm just like a greedy little glutton sometimes. And I, anytime I get some free candy, I'm going to jump at that opportunity. If you are going to Silver Dollar City and you have small kids, so like six and under, and they're not big on thrill seekers, you, I think you're setting yourself to have a little bit better time than some of the, the people with older kids because the older kids are going to want to do all the rides with the long lines. With the younger kids, the toddlers, the toddler things to do aren't always crazy busy. You can go to Fireman's Landing. You may have a teeny tiny line, but you're always going to have a little teeny tiny weight some things will be you know walk in like the play areas you just walk in you there's no line you it's just constantly revolving there's a carousel kids like to do there's a little tree house or you like to do um also you know at that you know if you have young kids or you're adults and you're not really big on the rides you may have a better time than some of the the riders now you have to expect the crowds if you are really fearful and have social anxiety um, do not go Silver Dollar City at Christmas time. Just don't do it. It gets really crowded. But if you can handle crowds, um, then Silver Dollar City is, is, is still amazing. You still get the great foods. You will have to wait for your food at times. I do not recommend going to the pizza place. You can get pizzas and calzones at this uh, place. Uh, kind of in, I can't remember where it's at. Kind of the midtown area by the... Uh, Tom Sawyer River Blast. Um, it's over in that area. There's a pizza place, and that place is notoriously long because they you, they make your pizza, and so you're waiting. You may get to that front of the line, but my friends just went over the summer, and remember, summer's not even crazy crowded usually, but they had to wait. I mean, they didn't get done for about an hour, and you know it should be fast food. So I would go to a place where you get your food immediately, or you go to a like a restaurant, or like a sit-down restaurant, like a buffet. I would either get your food immediately or a buffet. But if you have to wait for them to bring you out something, aka pizza, don't do it. It's not a good idea. It's gonna take forever. So just go get you a burger, get you some tater skillets. Get you a potato on a stick. Y'all, I love the potatoes there. They have uh, bread sticks you can dip in marinara. And they got nachos and brisket and barbecue. And, woo, doggy, they got so much good food at the holidays. Uh, even more options during the holidays. Like their s'mores and apple dumplings. Ooh, get their apple dumplings. Of course, I still like their hot apple turnovers. Di- not dip, but just slathered with that warm apple butter that's a shout out to you mikey who loves it when i talk about apple butter but anyway back to the point which is silver dollar city is still doable it's still enjoyable if you manage your expectations on the weekends it will be crowded that's gonna be normal if you are a show person okay so there is an option for people who don't want to wait in line for the shows because Christmas, again, it's so popular. The long lines build up for rides, the thrill rides. But I'd say the, the lines that may may actually be the worst at Sorrow City sometimes are the shows, especially at Christmas because everyone is just... The ones, the indoor shows, people are just like climbing to get in. Now, luckily, a lot of these theaters and places have tons of seating. And so even if you're in a long line, you'll still be able to get into the next show. But sometimes you're not. Or sometimes you just want to make sure you get to the front and you don't have to wait in that line to save your spot for that one hour. Because if you want to, like for instance, if you want to get in that saloon show and you want to... You're, you may have to get in line about 45 minutes to an hour ahead of time. You just may want to say no. I would rather pay for a show lover's pass. So this reserves some of the best seats in the house for select performances. Um, and, you know, during the summer, the show lover's pass cost about $10. Now, I don't have an update on the show lover's pass for for like the holiday season, but I'm assuming it's still going to be $10. I think they may charge an extra dollar for processing over online. You can get all this stuff online, by the way. Uh, If you're someone who doesn't want to wait in line to 
to get into Marvel Cave. I think they even have a special Marvel Cave one where you just pay a little extra money for that. So if you got the extra guac money, go ahead and pay for some uh, Trailblazer show, show Lovers Pass, especially if you only have one day. If you only have one day to get Silver Dollar City done, you're going to want to maximize your time and uh, get there early, possibly get a Trailblazer Pass, or, uh, or, or just have a, a good game plan. Now, once it starts getting dark that's when for real that's when silver Dollar city the magic of silver Dollar city is just huh beautiful it is beautiful uh by the time it's night and you're there and it's just completely crowded it'll to me it's worth it because the the lights are just are awesome and kids love it you'll love it they have this awesome little cute but short like parade with Rudolph and friends and interactive people in the parade. There's lots of little kitty shows. There's one kitty show down down there where kids get called up on stage and they get to dance around and some of them get picked to do some cool things in there. They they just have so much stuff that is constantly going that is is going to be fun even with the crowds. You just got to you just got to know and expect it. And if at all possible, do yourself a favor, avoid the Saturday if you can. If you have to choose between a Saturday you know, or a Friday or Sunday, I'd still probably choose a, probably a Sunday. My next choice would be Friday. My third choice would be Saturday. If I could choose a Thursday, I will do it. And last year, they started opening up Silver Dollar City on Wednesdays. Now, they do not open up Silver Dollar City on Monday or Tuesday, which was always kind of a bummer. Like, it's so crowded. Open this park up, please, on Monday or Tuesday. Because then I could just extend, like, a long weekend. And they may have to miss school on, you know, maybe Monday. But, man, that'd be totally worth it. But they don't. I think the earliest they will open up the parks during the week will be Wednesday. So we actually took the kids out of school several days, almost a week, right after Thanksgiving. Um, Not advised for everybody. But, again, this is really important to our family and our kids typically have good attendance and no behavioral problems. And, well, we haven't been sent to truancy court yet, knock on wood. So we went on Wednesday and it was perfect. I mean, the you know, we we still try to get there early, but we didn't have to worry about rushing. Um, it was it was a great experience. It gets crowded, you know, a little bit more crowded on Thursdays. A lot more crowded on Fridays and severely more crowded on Saturdays. If you manage to avoid going to Silver Dollar City or you just want to not go at all during during the holidays, there are so many other great attractions. The uh, What was formerly called Dixie Stampede, which is now just Dolly Stampede, is uh, it's, it's a great show at Christmas. And a lot of the Branson shows have wonderful Christmas programs, Christmas songs, beautiful messages. You know, everyone up there at Branson, I mean, they're all... They're all good country Jesus folks. You got your got your Christian denominations, I would say. Everyone's uh, filled with Christmas spirit. There's tons to do anyway. Again, go back and listen to that other episode for all the things to do. But I just kind of wanted to refresh those that are kind of kind of like me as a I'm not a young young mom, but I have I have a toddler and I have kind of an older child not an old old child but she's getting to the point where she likes thrill rides so you know I kind of have this range of children Um, I do not have teenagers yet I'm sure my my tips will change when I have teenagers and my teenagers may stay forget it they don't even care about some of the stuff we care about but please you know holler at us if you have any tips to share or other ideas or things I may have skipped over again I just kind of wanted to to kind of dive in deep about my concerns of Silver Dollar City at Christmas. But y'all, if if it comes down between, oh my God, now I'm scared. Do I even go to Silver Dollar City now? Go, please don't miss out on this. Just, just take my advice. Just either go super early or go on a different day. But if you have to go on Saturday, just get there early. And you know, there's been times where we haven't been able to get there early and we've still been fine we just knew what to expect you just have to manage your expectations and manage the expectations of of your family but if you have anything else to add feel free to give me an email 
at roadtripbranson at gmail.com. I would love to hear from people. I'm try I'm really trying to get some more trip reviews set up. One of the biggest challenges is I record so late. Like for instance, right now it is eleven o'clock at night on Thursday, September 19th. And this is the perfect time for me. So most of my you know, most of the people I want to interview, they probably don't want to talk to me at eleven o'clock at night or twelve o'clock at midnight, but I'm a night owl. So this is when I really get going. And so it's really difficult for me to sit still before 9 o'clock. And so I'm struggling to to get people to want to come on the show that late. So if you are someone who can be interviewed late, if you're a night owl like me, I'd love to hear from you and let me pick your brain about Branson and you can go over tips or tri- your latest trip reviews or some of your ideas. People love to hear about your trip. They really do. I mean, it it provides such valuable information, and I love it. So, you know, drop me a line at roadtripbranson at gmail. You can also go on the Road Trip Branson Facebook page, send us a message there, write a comment, interact with us. You know, please be our friend. Uh, Share share this information. If you haven't already, we'd love to to have an I like a positive one, an iTunes review. I love those. They're so wonderful. I mean, I've only had like one, but you know, it was amazing. It was the best experience ever when someone was like, oh, I like this. It made me feel like a million bucks. So if you could write a review, um, unless you have something positive to say, then you can just go somewhere else. And if you are a Disney World person, you like to travel to Disney World, check out our other podcast at Road Trip WDW on the same Facebook. You know, we have a Road Trip WDW Facebook page as well. So thanks, guys, for tuning in this week. That is going to do it. See you guys later.